our next guest for this hour are Andy Dunn and Brian Spally. They are co-founders of the Men's Internet Retailer. And guys, if I say it wrong, Bonobos. Got it. Nailed Bonobos. It. Named Nailed after. It. Named after the, the primate. The playful chimpanzee. Of um, course. <laughs> this is a this is a fun story. So I basically just couldn't find pants that fit and had a girlfriend who, who lent me a sewing machine and said, why don't you start fixing them yourself? It was kind of a dare kind of a joke, and it turned into um, a bunch of pants that fit me a lot better than anything I could find in stores. These pants actually fit every guy that put them on. So it, it was, the, the idea was at first, you know, I kind of have a, um, like a, a funnier shape, a build that's harder to find pants that fit, but it turned out that tall, thin guys put them on and liked them, and shorter, uh, huskier guys put them on and liked them, and everything in between. So I think we knew that there was a business here when we saw that happen. When, the, when, when 15 guys came over and every single guy bought two or three pairs of pants, you know, and Andy's scrambling around the house helping me get these guys fitted, we thought, wow, if, it, if everybody that comes in can buy them. And now what we found is that 94% of the guys who, who try our pants end up keeping them. So, so they will buy pants online, even though they can't well, find them How are they telling on. each other that the pants are so great? There must I mean, be word of mouth. So this is it. Word of mouth is, is a huge part of, of what we do. Um, and, and the early, that's how the word got out, um, was basically our best PR is a guy wearing our pants and looking great in them and telling his friends and telling his coworkers. And, you know, you'll get one guy at Goldman Sachs and then the three other bankers that sit in his little bullpen. We'll, we'll have pants in the next couple weeks because they'll well, hear from You have to tell him. them not to wear jackets or coats with them so you can see the full, because again, they're supposedly make your back it's side nice look back really good. Nice back rear view. Rear <laughs> view <laughs> I'm not kidding. We're, that, that. we're trying to eliminate a, a scourge upon the nation, which is khaki diaper butt, <laughs> which is this issue of very frumpy lo looking cuts. <laughs> the mission behind it's all of So yeah. how did you turn that into a business? Because it seems like a lot of people out there, they have their passion, they want to make it into a business. What were your steps like? I think I should take this one, actually, because I, I watched <laughs> Brian sell about 50 pairs of pants in one day out of the bedroom of, his, of our uh, home we were sharing in Atherton, California. Mm -hmm. And we were, at that point, two of the poorest guys in the wealthiest zip code in the country, renting a home <laughs> as second-year students at Stanford. And I thought to myself, this should be a business where we go direct to the customer. You know, people are walking in, they're buying pants. Maybe we put up a website and we keep men out of retail stores when we know that men fundamentally don't really don't enjoy shopping. You don't have stores. No stores. We don't have stores, okay. but we have customers in 50 states and 40 countries. And we find that they'll come back if we offer them terrific, what we refer to as ninja customer service. They're, they're witty, empathetic, college-educated folks who you're going to be talking to. And then if you want to return it, we, we put the gun in your hand. You can return it whenever you want. Our return policy is 100% open-ended. Any pants, any time, any reason. And we cover the shipping costs on any exchanges. Was the only incentive you needed knowing that you had a good product? You know, I think it, it, at the time it was a totally different environment. And what's been interesting now that we're in this environment is we find that there aren't specific incentives for the men's pants trade. I combed through the TARP legislation, <laughs> and unfortunately nothing was allocated to the online pants business. The incentives, though, are that there's nothing better to be doing right now than trying to build an innovative business. I mean, when you look around the country at a lot of the large companies that are falling on hard times, I think it's a spirit of entrepreneurship and innovation that has always propelled this country forward. And so the incentives are more subtle. We just acquired a second office space in Manhattan, which, which Brian was able to get a fantastic deal on. Yeah in part because of what's happening with the real estate market here. Yeah. In terms of finding talent, we just put out postings that are very aggressive in terms of describing specifically the kind of person that we want to hire, the culture of the company, what we want to do differently. And we put them out on Craigslist, and we put them out on LinkedIn, and we put them out on Doostang.com, and we put them out on these job boards, and we find that the, the talent and the candidates come to us. And so now is a, is a wonderful time to be saying, hey, we've got a growing company. Come join us. And they're like, Wow, wait a second, you know, I'll, I'm happy to work for equity and not a lot of cash compensation to build that next great upside. American company. It's all about the upside. Did you overestimate how much you would need to get off the, to get things really, really ramped up? You know, it's funny, reality helped us to overestimate over time. And when we, when we set out to raise capital, we set out to raise $300,000. And we were very lucky to have two mentors of ours invest in the company. And, say, and we kind of sat down and said, we want to sell pants online. And they said, well, that's either an incredibly stupid idea or a genius one. Right. And then and you stood up and showed them your butt, well, the right? <laughs> and then said, look at these pants. And they, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Initially, we thought we would raise that amount. And one of the things that we did was we didn't scale the cost side of the business past the revenue side. So we were very slow. You know, I started full time and Brian was working another job. 
we waited to watch the growth of the business. Before we start taking calls, how is business? How's it growing? And yeah. what about Monday? You got a second round of financing not long we ago. We did. 2.8 million? Is it's, that how much it's, it was? It, it, it was. It's been phenomenal. I moved to New York in October of 2007 with two suitcases and 400 pairs of pants, put them up <laughs> on the shelves of my bedroom wall and would wake up in the morning and make my bed and then do pick, pack, and ship, which at that time was two or three orders a day. So I think we started with 10,000 in revenue in our first month. And this March, we'll do north of 325,000 of revenue. How many pants have you shipped? We shipped 12,000 in our first year. We broke even in 2008, just about on profitability. And we've, the most fun part is we've created 15 jobs here in Manhattan and have 15 folks coming into work every day who are thrilled with what they do and currently doing 100% of our manufacturing here in the Garment District of New York City. Got a direct question here. What is the long-term vision for your business? So this is fun. We want to be the first 100% web-driven premium men's brand. We basically want people to, to sit back and hit their heads and say, guys don't like shopping. Why would they go to, to bricks and mortar retail stores, which is a very challenging business, mm -hmm. and buy a product there when they could just go online in the middle of their workday, you know, on their stop between ESPN and Facebook, stop at Bonobos and pick up a, a, a full new wardrobe. We think the advantage of our company is not just an awesome product, but how you get it. And this is the insight that we feel like is missing in the apparel world. If you look at the top 25 service companies in the country, there are only two apparel brands on the list, and they're Land's End and L.L. Bean. And we're, we're delighted to plug them on air because we think they deliver fantastic customer experiences, not just the product, but taking care of you once you bought it. They're our role models. I mean, it, and this is a funny thing that people will let, this is another, I think, a wall that prevents people from starting businesses, which is worrying about someone else stealing your idea. Just Go do it and do a great job. And what's next? Well, quickly, what's next? Because what, what else are you oh, going to do? Oh, boy. Do There's so many good things coming. We, we, we have heard from guys that they want us to make not just their pants, but their shirts and their shoes and their belts and their ties and everything else. So we're, we're really looking forward to expanding the team and, and to creating more jobs here in New York and to, and to helping guys so that they can go online to bonobos.com and get not just their pants, but the whole outfit. And make the world a better place. <laughs> because we don't have to look at saggy khakis. Thank you for that.